Grandmother Pamela Cook is rounding South Australia's second longest jetty on her early morning swim when she suddenly feels a sharp tug on her ankle. Thinking that it's a friend playing a prank, she shakes it off and continues swimming. But this is no friend. This is a predator with 300 teeth, and it comes in for a second bite. Hit like and subscribe. This is fierce. Beachport sea urchins and slugs are a group of locals who enjoy swimming in the seas off South Australia. They meet every morning at 7.30, come rain or shine. Dipping into the sea that early is a refreshing start to the day and an enjoyable way to stay fit. Beachport is situated 200 miles southeast of Adelaide. It's a small coastal town and a popular fishing spot, but it's most famous for its jetty. Built in the late 1800s, the jetty measures 772 meters, 2,533 feet long. Its wooden slats and white painted railings disappear into Rivoli Bay. Those that walk along it can see the golden sandy beaches stretching along the coastline. It's the perfect place to swim and fish from. But on the morning of October 2nd, 2023, there was another fish swimming around the jetty, one with a deadly appetite an opportunistic hunter on the prowl for an easy meal. Swimming from Beachport Beach around the jetty and back again was something that 64-year-old Pamela Cook had been doing for more than a decade. She had some heart issues and swimming was a great way to keep her heart healthy. She swam each morning before her shift at the local Beachport Hotel began. It set her up for the day, but just before 8 a.m., disaster struck. Pamela waded into the water with her group of friends. There were about a dozen of them. The sea was calm, the conditions perfect for their early morning swim. When she reached waist height, she kicked off with her legs and began on the route toward the end of the wooden jetty. As she rounded the structure, she suddenly felt a sharp tug on her ankle. She instinctively kicked away, thinking it was one of the other swimmers clashing with her leg behind her or playing a prank. But then she noticed a dark shadow come around the side of her, and her heart leapt. She realized that the tug on her ankle had in fact been a shark bite. Seconds later, the juvenile great white shark swung around. Its jaws opened wide, its rows of sharp teeth on display as its head broke through the surface of the water. The bite on the ankle had been a test, and Pamela had passed the test. The shark surfaced right next to her and Pamela could see its dark eyes as the gray head lunged forward. She didn't have time to react. She didn't have time to swim away. The shark clamped its jaws around Pamela's thigh, and she let out a terrified yell. At that moment, all she could think about was a family friend of theirs, Jared Stebbins, who was fatally attacked by a shark in 2005. She knew this was serious and that she may not live to tell the tale, but she wasn't going down without a fight. She punched the snout over and over again, trying to push the shark off her. She could feel the intense pressure of the jaws around her upper leg. She was trapped and couldn't break free. In the scrap, her hand and arm were torn by the razor's sharp teeth as the shark thrashed its head from side to side. Two other swimmers near Pamela heard her cries for help and saw the commotion unfolding. They could see Pamela kicking furiously, the water splashing and frothing all around her. They immediately swam to her aid and yelled at some construction workers on the jetty. They held on to Pamela, promising not to let go, keeping her afloat and trying desperately to get the shark to let go. And then the shark miraculously released its grip. Pamela could feel the release and pressure, but she was by no means out of the water yet. Maintenance worker Greg Ray, who was working on the jetty at the time, immediately leapt into action. He and some colleagues could see the women in the water screaming for help, and they grabbed their first aid and trauma kits and rushed to the edge of the jetty. By the time they reached the end of the jetty, Pamela was being helped up the ladder and out of the water by her fellow swimmers. They hauled her up. Pamela's husband Greg was buying a coffee when he received the phone call. He couldn't believe it when Pamela's friend on the other end of the phone explained that she had been attacked by a shark. He rushed to the scene. The shark had torn a gash out of Pamela's thigh. Blood poured from the open wound. Her friends lay her down, and worker Greg Ray immediately tied a tourniquet around her upper leg. When he pulled it tight, the bleeding slowed. Two other witnesses, locals Silvana and Michelle Jewell, 
who heard that there was a shark attack, raced toward the end of the jetty. They pulled out their mobile phones and immediately dialed the emergency services. It was a race against time. One of Pamela's friends took off her shirt and tied it around another wound on Pamela's arm to stem the bleeding. Keeping her calm was one of the main priorities. There was a real threat that she may go into shock. Her friends and bystanders kept her talking, reassuring her that the ambulance was on its way. That was all they could do. They had performed all the emergency first aid they could. They now had to just hope that the emergency services arrived in time to take over. By now, her husband Greg had arrived and knelt down by her side. When the paramedics arrived, those surrounding Pamela helped her lie on a spinal board and rush her to the waiting ambulance. She was driven to Mount Gambier Hospital, about 85 kilometers from Beachport. Pamela was rushed into emergency surgery to try and save her leg. She received 200 stitches in her thigh, arm, and hand. She was lucky to be alive, and by the evening, her husband reported that she was in stable condition. Pamela, at 65 years old, was a grandmother, the matriarch of the family. In her hospital bed, she was surrounded by her loved ones. And although it was early yet, it didn't take long before she decided that she would go back into the water. It may not be right away, but she knew she would get out there again. She didn't want her life to be ruled by fear, and her love for swimming in the sea had given her so much over the years that she couldn't bear the thought of giving it up. As news spread of the horrible attack, locals were in shock. There had never been anything like it in the area before. The swimming group had been performing the same swim every morning for the past 30 years. They were terrified that they may have just witnessed their friend's final moments as they anxiously waited for news from the hospital. While Pamela was rushed off and into surgery, crew members from the state emergency service began scouring the water for the shark. They flew Phantom 4 drones 800 meters offshore and 500 meters north and south of the jetty all afternoon. By the following morning, no sign of the shark had been spotted. Pamela's attack was the seventh serious attack in the country that same year. It came just weeks after surfer Toby Begg lost his leg to a shark attack along the New South Wales coast at Port Macquarie. Earlier in the year, school teacher Simon Bacanello was tragically killed in a shark attack off South Australia's west coast. Every year, there are on average 23 shark attacks in Australian waters. Two or three of these prove fatal. It's a risk that swimmers, surfers, and divers put themselves at every time they enter the water. But considering how many people enjoy water sports along the coastlines, shark attacks are still incredibly rare. And this time, Pamela was incredibly lucky.